What is the most irritating thing about emails? Receiving long and confusing messages. So let's learn this art of writing professional emails today so that our emails are respected and not rejected. Before writing emails, make sure you're able to answer three questions. Question number one, what is the purpose of this email? Is it to inform, to persuade, or to motivate the reader? Deciding on the objective of the email would help you craft a clear message. Question number two, what mutual benefit am I offering the reader for reading the message? Now this benefit can be in the form of collaboration, incentives, profit, whatever it is, make sure you're clear about the form of gain the receiver will be getting after reading your message. And question number three, how much information does my reader already has about the topic? So that repetition of the content can be avoided and the reader's time is not wasted. Let's explore how we can design each section of email writing in an effective manner. So the first section that we come across in email writing is to section. And we all know that we have the license of bombarding this section with as many email addresses as we can, but with the help of a comma. What most of us forget in this two section is that we also have to pay respect to the perceiver's rank. That is, if we are writing the same email to manager and deputy manager and assistant manager, in this organizational hierarchy, manager has the senior most position. And then we have the deputy and assistant coming along. So when we are going to type their email addresses in the two section, make sure we are putting the manager's email address first, then the deputies and then the assistants. We need to do this in order to pay respect to the rank and position of the receiver. So it is considered to be impolite and discourteous if you are not following this rule. Next in line, we have CC, that is carbon copy. And we use this section for sending the mails to people whom we just need to inform about the status of the upcoming projects or the upcoming details. We are not expecting any kind of response from the person whom we have carbon copied the mail. There are two benefits for using this section. First of all, when you CC the copy to a person, he knows that he can read this email at his own convenience. He is not forced to reply immediately. Secondly, when you CC the copy to your boss, or to your immediate seniors, everybody who is in the loop of this email communication, that is the people who are in the two section, they automatically become alert and they become more effective in their tasks and duties because they know that this communication is not being conducted among just the juniors and just the seniors. In fact, Seniors and juniors are working together, so we are answerable to the senior who has been CC'd the mail. So this makes the juniors in the two section more productive and efficient. So for example, if you have to email the details about the meeting, you're going to email the details to colleagues at gmail.com, but you're going to CC the copy to the boss. He is kept informed and updated. Next, we have BCC section, which stands for blind carbon copy, and it is a kind of a secret communication. Why secret communication? Because only the receiver of the BCC copy and the sender, that is the person who is in the from section, would be knowing that this communication has taken place. I hope this example would make the concept of BCC more clear. Example, you're working for a company, and in the past six months, you worked with manager one. Then you got transferred to another department, and now you're working under manager two for an international project. 
Now you have a very friendly relationship with both manager one and manager two, but the problem is manager one and manager two hate each other. Now, because you're working for an international project, manager one wants to know some of the confidential details. As a rule, you should not be leaking out the information, but because he has been your immediate boss some months back, and because you do not want to invite his anger, so you are now in a fix whether to share the information or not. So you think of a solution. You decide to forward the details to the team members in the two section. You carbon copy the details to your manager too, with whom you're working for the project. And you BCC the copy to manager one. In this way, manager two and the team members will not be able to know that the information has been leaked out. It's not an appreciable idea to commit this act. In fact, you should be avoiding PCC as far as possible. And then we have the subject line, which is of course just like the topic or title of the email. And we all know that topics and titles are supposed to be short and crisp. We're going to follow the same rule in designing the subject line of the email also. Mostly people read the emails on their mobile screens and when they open up their inboxes, it's just the first 25 to 30 letters or alphabets of the subject line that are displayed to the reader. And those 25 to 30 letters are enough for the reader to decide whether to respond immediately or whether to delay reading the message. So it's always a good idea to place the most important information in the first half of subject line. For example, a subject line for submit your report on Pharma project by June 9. Now here you can see that this phrase in red is your first 25 to 30 letters, which are displayed to the reader. So it's a good idea to rephrase your subject line and put it like this. Pharma project report due by 9 June. Now, did you notice this has become much shorter, much crisper, and of course, you have reduced the number of words for the reader to immediately view it in the first look on the mobile. So you have facilitated the reader by cutting short the word and just being to the point. When you need to send reminders or when you need to tell somebody that this is something urgent, just state reminder in the subject line and your topic or urgent in the subject line with a dash and then your topic. Let's move on to the body of email. Make sure you always greet first. So it's going to be greetings, Mr. Full Name or Miss Full Name. You are not going to write the reader's first name only or the reader's second name. You're going to write his full name in the first place, because again, this is also one of the rules that when you address somebody in a technical writing document for the first time, you mention his full name. And then if there is a need to mention his name twice in the same document, we use his surname or the second name. But for the first time, we use the full name. Then if you want to go for a generic greeting, you can say greetings to all members or simply greetings to all. Make sure the A in all is capitalized over here. Also, you can see members is capitalized over here. We have two ways to start our email, an indirect way and a direct way. Of course, if you're starting in an indirect way, you can just ask about the well-being of the person. Hope everything's well at your side. And if you're starting on a direct note, you can say here are the details you requested. So we do not appreciate paragraphs in email writing. In fact, we use lists. That is, we divide our information into chunks so that the reader is not scared by the amount of words. In fact, he takes it as easy go reading. We have three kinds of lists that we use in email writing, bulleted, numbered, embedded. Let's check out the context in which they are used. We use bulleted lists when we are talking about objects that have equal importance or items that are of same type. For example, here you can see we're talking about the computer lab inventory. So the items are of same nature, computers, chairs, multimedia sciences. So you can see that every item is equally important over here. So this is why we're using bullets 
for the products or the objects over here. Those numbered lists, when we want to give sequential instruction, like for example, for submitting your form, number one, download the form, number two, fill the details, three, attach the documents, four, get the form signed, and five, submit the form. Now, if you're going to miss any of the step over here, might be you will not be able to fulfill the task efficiently. So this is why when we want to make sure that a task is performed sequence wise or a set of instructions are followed sequentially, we put them with numbers. Then there's third type of list, which is known as embedded lists. And these are the lists which are used within the sentences. Because again, the idea of using lists is to display the reader that the message has been provided to you in the form of chunks and there are no paragraphs. So here you can see we have introduced numbers in brackets. You should number one, fill in the email address, number two, subject nine, number three, create your message. You can also put down the letters A, B, C. So embedded list means incorporating list within the paragraph. Make sure when you're designing your lists, you are not using lists for more than two items. So you just, so if you just have two items to talk about, please do not get carried away and do not use any kind of lists. Just put it down in a sentence. Introduce your list with a colon. Here you can see I have used a colon, then I've given one line spacing, and then I started with my list. Also keep the text of your list aligned. Aligned means in a straight line. So you can see I have put down my bullet points just under my statement, my first statement. And capitalize the first letter of each list item. So you can see over here, every item of the bullet point has been capitalized. And end the sentence items with a full stop. Now, this is important. You are not going to put dots or full stops in front of products or one words. But if you're writing sentences, make sure you're ending the sentences with a full stop, which is, of course, an obvious rule. So it's easy to remember. End the, full, end the sentence with a full stop and the words with no full stops. Keep your list items parallel. Now, when you talk about parallelism in lists, it means that you're using one form of speech. These two examples, one is the correct one, one is the wrong one. Why is this correct? Let's check it out. For submitting your form, download, fill, attach. Now you can see I've used the form of speech that is the verb in all the three lists, numbered list. Let's check out this list. For submitting a form, download the form. Filling the details is important. Do not forget to attach. Now here, what we did was we started off with a verb, then we moved to a trend, and then we used an imperative sentence. So here, we are not using the same form of speech. This is faulty values. So make sure you're using one form of speech, either verbs, nouns, whatever you're starting with, make sure you're following the same part of speech. There are situations where we do not use lists. For example, we are writing a thank you email. There's no point of using a list over there. You can very easily write two or three sentences for saying thank you. Same is the case with a condolence email or if you want to talk about the loss of somebody, you do not need to write lists. You can just write two or three sentences. The other thing that we should be avoiding in email is gender specific language. And for that purpose, what we can do is there, there, there are different strategies with which we can avoid gender specific language. For example, remove the pronoun. Here, he has been used as a pronoun. An employee will be held responsible for improper email he writes. So what we can do is instead of just targeting the he or masculine form, let's make it improperly written email. Let's remove the pronoun altogether. Next strategy that you can use for avoiding gender specific languages, change the masculine pronoun into plural pronoun. 
for the improper email say right and the third strategy can be use he or she together or write s slash he which means the same so this is how we can make your writing more neutral and more professional then this these are the most common five kind of informal and formal replies so instead of saying please answer me informally say i would appreciate a reply i'm sending you the final attachment say please find the attached file if you're writing properly we are working on your request your request is being processed thanks for your email is informal communication and formal communication would be thank you for your email and can you please is an informal way of questioning better ways could you please also in a formal piece of writing emojis emoticons and exclamation marks are a big no for formal there are some formal closings like sincerely best regards and kind regards these are the only three closings that you can use for your email writing formally when you're writing informally you can say thanks cheers best see you all the best after the closing we put down our signature block which has these important components put down in this same in this hierarchy that is name designation affiliations department organization email address phone number website of your company and your social media handles now this is an example that you can see you can see over here regards and then you have the name of the person his position then if he's uh, affiliations then his name of the company address then his email address phone number website of his company's address and then here you can add your social media account and if you're a student instead of writing your position put down your academic id or your role number so here is an example of a student he has put down his section if you have got a lot of section it's a good idea to put down your sections so if you're a member of different clubs and societies put them down here your department name of the university your email address phone number and the university's address and in the end social media accounts now if you look at this kind of signature block you would feel like this is something big very plain so let me tell you a website that can help you design that can help you generate a classy kind of signature block which you would love to use in your emails so that's about the signature block generator type hubspot.com email signature generator it's going to teach this is the interface and you can design your free template free signature template over here and here you can see this kind of a very classy look and you can see over here different icons used over here you can also see your account social media accounts over here and you do not need to do anything just type in the required details and you do not need to cut copy and paste the icons and then design your signature email signature it's going to be generated automatically that is the beauty of this website let's quickly talk about some common acronyms and abbreviations in emails although abbreviations are not appreciated in technical writing but some of the abbreviations are quite common so there's no harm in using them for example asap that is as soon as possible so you can use this abbreviation in the form apply for the summer course asap so you're going to brief first your uh um, your abbreviations and this is how you can use it three things you always treat everyone first apply for the summer course asap and regards and your signature document then. then we have nrn which means no reply necessary talking about the changes say thank you for the suggested changes and then from a new line you can just state when no reply necessary and the ending I, we already talked about it for your information. So, greetings, Mr. Elon Musk. FYI, that is for your information. And then you can attach the document or the proposal or any uh, attachment you want to attach with this email. And then you can end with regards and your signature block. EOM, that is end of message. You can use this abbreviation in your subject line and you do not need to write content. That's the best part of this abbreviation. So, you can use this abbreviation in this manner project meeting may 24th 11 a.m bracket open eom and a message bracket close this is how you use this abbreviation as a subject line. and 
this would not, this would help you not to write the content and you would be able to send the message just through subject line. NP capitalized or small is no problem. LET means leaving early today. So if you want to tell people about it, greetings all members, let due to an emergency, kindly manage regards and then signature block at the end. Make sure you put in the complete signature block. Triple O out of office. So greetings, Miss Benjamin. Triple O right now. She'll be back by noon. So if you want to tell somebody that you are not available in the office, we use this every day. In my opinion, we use this abbreviation mostly in the body of it. Just greetings, dear class fellows. Online classes were a good decision, but not the best one. I am all. Do you agree with me? And then regards to the shop EYT mostly used in the content and you can use it in this manner. Greetings, dear staff members. I'm in no hurry about the updates in your project. TYT. HDH, hope that helps. Mostly used in the content as in we have registered your campaign. Can you restart your device? HDH. Now you might be thinking that there's an email for every situation. Is that so? No. In fact, there are situations where you should not be writing emails. For example, when you are emotionally drained out, or when you need to talk about some controversial topic related to religion, politics, or if you are not in a good mood and you want to abuse somebody, you want to take revenge from somebody. So please do not put it down with the email because of course, emails can be retraced and you might get a sorry figure when your emails would be reconfigured again. And one last rule that all of us should be following, you always reply to the sender within 24 to 48 hours. It's considered to be a polite gesture from the reader's side. Hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you.